Alright, let's get started with the game here. On the left side, we have, as the blue team, Hero Cursed, Hollow, and Faculty, and they have Tassadar, Falstad, Tyrael, Anubarak, and Brightwing. And on the right hand side, in the red trunks, we have Vega Squadron Five, with Arthas, Ufa, Tychus, Abatha, and Illidan. Find. All of some very pretty skin tints. Yep, indeed. Um, let me see if I can fix the overlay, because for some reason it's not really saving. Um, I'll turn okay. it off for now, and I'll yeah. okay, turn it back so on later. Currently, in fact, are uh, bushwhacking. They're all waiting in this bush, but it doesn't look like Vega really want to von wander out that much. This is a, co a tactic that is very, very common among some of the higher level teams waiting for that bushwhack, but most of the teams have wised up to it now. And as you can see, Falstad didn't lose any XP for this, was able to instantly fly up to top lane and begin soaking in that XP. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's actually a good choice here for top lane, because we have only have Uther and Arthas in top, so um, he can just outrange them and uh, still get the XP without any real danger here. What this does mean, though, is that uh, Vega aren't running a roaming comp, which is what we usually see. It would be Arthas roaming around with Abathor on his back, and they would be looking for snipes on certain heroes. This means that they are simply going to try and get some damage down on top lane, by laning instead of getting that roaming potential, taking their mercenaries, which means Vega gonna have a huge advantage in terms of the mercenary war. Oh, we had a little jumping on Brightwing here, but I mean, Brightwing, of course, always really, really easy to get away with him. And um, nice, nice play so far by Abther. Uh, we, we see the mines in the bottom lane, all the bushes are taken, so uh, no real surprises here uh, for uh, Vega Squadron. Yeah, Vega pretty pretty safe in that bottom lane, so it's unlikely that we'll see Illidan get sniped, who is one of the characters we would likely see be sniped more, except for maybe Tychus, who only has one dash to get away as opposed to Illidan's two. And in the meantime, like we did say, Enfrak are taking their top easy camp, whereas Vega, they haven't really had the chance to go to theirs because they're still attempting to deal Falstad, who's doing a fantastic job of just playing it safe in this top lane. Yeah, he's staying back, just like he should. Uh, no real reason to uh, take any risk right now. Especially against these two, because, I mean, once once Uther stuns you, you, ha you got the sustained stun with Arthas. Uh, it can get quite dangerous, and um, if they don't know where everyone's at, especially right now, I mean, Illidan, for example, is taking the easy camp right now. They don't know that. Um, he could be coming in there. And it looks like, uh, and Faculty is trying to grab this tribute here. Indeed, they're getting ready. Brightwing still just hanging in the spot lane, soaking up XP till the last possible second. Oh, she good engage here by Noob. He tries to get Arthas, uh, Uther, and he goes down in the end. Tyrael with the final blow there. Yeah, very, very well played. Very good engage. And as we can see, Brightwing still not wasting the time, just soaking XP, realizing that they've pretty much got this secure. With a person down and Tyker still in the mid lane, and Abatha not yet with result. He does not need to come down there and try and help it, but Illidan gonna attempt to punish this with the help of Abba and instantly polymorph. Oh, that was quite dangerous here actually by Arthas. Oh my uh, god, there's the Venom! Being drops low, but he does escape very, very low there, that was close. Yeah, let's check if you... Well, nah, he wasn't cooldown on the well, so this might have actually turned really into a dangerous situation. And looks like a pretty hard push here by end faculty. They really want to get this fort up here. Towers are almost down. And um, three players up alongside the easy camp to bolster this. Tessida is trying to help out here as well. But easy camp is falling, and with that, everyone can return to their lanes. Yep, end faculty. Just gonna wander near to this mid lane, see if they can pick up Slimer, but Slimer playing very safe. He's hanging back there as towers, does not want to get ganked. And end faculty gonna show themselves in the mid lane while we see the lane swap back for end faculty here, with Zo going, Zypho going back to the top. And Tastar rolling into the mid lane, but now they both have to come back to where they came from to go yep. for the tribute. The next tribute is up, and it's again in a nice position here for end faculty. And the, the way they're playing this is really clever. They always try to gank, try to pick off single heroes like Uther right here. He's in a big trouble, tries to get away. Abathur's on him, saves him a little bit, but that comes to stun from Anu. Really good stun. He goes down. Tries to dish out a little bit more damage, and Noob falls, and Uther is still in there. Looks like Vega wants to turn this around, and they're doing a good job so far. Tyrael tries to get on top of Tychus, but he's faced back. Really good job, and he goes down. Wow, Vega Squadron really turning this around, but Arthas falls, and Tychus has to get away. Whoa, really close call. Can he do? 
Yep, yeah, he can do it. Solid, solid first aids there from both Illidan and Tychus, keeping them alive. Did it really work for first for Arthas, who doesn't have a first aid of his own? But still, very, very nice to see and very well played by the two of them. And there's something I'd like to point out, which is quite interesting in the talents here. What we usually see with these kind of comps, when we're seeing the Brightwing and the Falstaff together, is they'll both be running Bride. But because N Faculty has such a solid roaming comp here, also Zon just got stunned by the Golem, well done. Um, because they have such a solid roaming comp with Tyrael and a Nubarak, which can take mercenaries, they only have one set of bribe, and Falstad has just taken the updraft, which gives him a bit of extra maneuverability and escape. Looks like Ed Faculty just grabbed the boss here and might actually get there in time to uh, try to disrupt this tribute. And there it is, Storm by Tassadar disrupting everything here. And they're not quite together yet. I mean, they really want to take their time before they go in there. Ooh, everything's clumped up. There comes the stun. Good job by Anoop, but he gets jumped upon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Test it back up. Yeah, the and ultimates will be coming very soon for M Faculty, and they may even come during this fight. Down goes Bastro, and there's the ultimate spread Faculty right now at this. It's Another amazing dead. stun. Uther is going to go down for sure. Oh no, actually, he might get away here. Will we see another stun by, by Anoop? Oh, everything's split up. Anoop might be in trouble here. Illidan tries to get on top of him, but he needs to get away. There comes the stun, and he goes down. Very nice shock and awe there from Felstead. Anubrak also popped his passive, so he wasn't in too much danger, thanks to that lifesteal. And because of this, and Faculty are now going to pick up the third tribute of the game, get a curse. The Golem, unfortunately, is already dead, so they're not going to be able to make the use of that in their push. But instead, they're just going to split up into the individual lanes and just push individually. And uh, Brightwing might need to back up a bit here, because if, uh, sorry, uh, Abifer might need to back up a bit here, because if Brightwing catches him, he might be in a bit of trouble. Ah, uh, you know, he doesn't know about it yet. I mean, it's only Brightwing um, attacking so far. Uh, everyone else just split pushing. And I think Tyrell and Tessera are doing a good job here. Uh, at least the gate is going to fall for sure. Oh, wait up. Watch out. They're in big trouble now. There comes the stun. Nice body block. Illidan tries to get on top of him. There comes the shield. He stays alive for now. Whoa. And they get down. Tyke is so fast. But yeah, Tyrell's you. still in trouble. Getting yeah. body blocked there by Tychus on the right side. By the, by the Tychus clone, that is. And the Odin form comes in, pushes out a lot more damage. Tiller goes down in the end, he tries to get on top of everyone, and there comes the storm, and Illidan falls. Double root there from Bastro, trying to save his team, but he's gonna go down to Zyphus. No, the heal from Ufa oh, keeps him alive. <laughs> amazing heal. Tychus was dashing to get him there, but uh, unfortunately, uh, not quite there on top of him in time. Oh, and there comes the kill on Abathur. He just melts away. Tychus, uh, uh, Felstead really, um, really got on top of him there. Amazing job seeing that happen. Yeah, just flew in and landed directly on his head. Now just being in the middle of lane. He knows he's not under threat. Just gonna go back, get some health, and end faculty taking their hard camp. They are in a great position right now. Two level lead, five kill advantage, and they already have most of their ults off cooldown for the next fight. They are in an incredible position right now. Yeah, and two forts are already down. Um, grabbing the hard camp. I think they're gonna go top now, let the hard camp do its job, and uh, see if they can grab the boss um, right out we're of Vega's hands. Here. If they want to try and get it, they're gonna have a fight on their hands. Tassadar and Falstad spot everything, spot the entirety of Vega coming here, thanks to the Oracle from Tassadar. Very, very solid. But because of the red eye that appears above their head, Vega now knows that Enfac is in their jungle as well, and they may be a bit more cautious to fight. But we have to remember. Abatha does have his ultimate evolution up, so if they're going to fight, they're going to be fighting two Odins. Yeah, and that's always big trouble. Lots and lots of damage. Um, lots and lots of clumping damage potential. And uh, we see the mines coming up as well. There's clear, uh, the clear ones to clear yeah, everything up. There's the ultimate, so we're going to see a fight here. Abatha would not have ulted if they had no idea to go again. And Tigers gets ulted on immediately, getting first down as quick as possible. Pops first aid. And here we go. Uh, everything's focused down on Illidan, but he gets away for now. Oh, tries to get on top, and from the left side, Vega Squad moves back in. Um, Brightwing's actually... T oh, no, Darkness is taken out, and from both sides, we see the Odins just dashing out a lot of damage, but everyone's falling here. Illidan might be the only one left alive, and Tassada, with the, with, the, uh, with the draft, just gets away. Yep, shifts out of there. Brightwing now 
going on for the Abafa clone, and Crippler is attempting to get Slimer, but Slimer, Ooh. oh, the double overdrive, solid there, and Zod misses with his deep tunnel, so Slimer gets dropped low, but does not fall down, and now, in fact, all way too low to get the golem, that was a two, that was a two for two fight. Yeah, kind of a weird fight, everything got split up in the end, um, I don't think that was the way they were meant to plan it. Um, I think they tried to like always focus down the Tychus uh, in the end of that fight, and uh, it got a little bit messy there. Yeah, it was pretty me it was pretty messy in the end. Neither team really got the fight they wanted. Like I said, everything's been up. The two Odins, though, very, very solid. They are what kept uh, Vega in that fight. That was a two-level down fight, and they played that beautifully. However, and Faculty's Golem is about to come up and they may attempt to take it or looks like they may in fact try and rotate up towards Vega's Golem but that is already down and this might dictate in Faculty's decision to go back to their own Golem. Yeah, I think they will um, and they're turning around right as we speak. So um, looks like they will grab that Golem and they do have Tacita up here to uh, just check what's going on, maybe stop the Golem off Vega Squadron. Yeah, he, w he will head in and slow that down. I like the fact that he's heading the safer route, because he knows that Vega are in their jungle and needs to be careful. But in the meantime, the rest of N Faculty just going to take their Golem, and they will likely roam around to see what they can find next. However, they may run into Vega, who are all oh, heading in this direction. There's the ultimate oh. evolution. Yeah, they're in a little bit of trouble right now. Everything's Typo. split up. Oh, Tychus might be able to get away. No, good ulti here by Uther. And Falset goes down so quickly. Inuk tries to get away. Tyrael, every time, everyone's just moving towards the fort. Inuk with a deep dive gets away. And uh, looks like they have to go a little bit deeper to stay safe here. But now comes the turnaround. But there's still three against five. And Zorn oh. being from a deep tunnel out again. Nice blink heal there from Noah Field as well to keep him alive. How did they do lose their bot fort? Tassadar, though, has cleared up the Golem in top lane, and may, if he is very, very quick, be able to run to that tribute to cap it, but we can see that Vega are all on the way as well, and if any fact wants to contest it, they can't let Tassadar do it alone, but it looks like they may just be willing to sacrifice this one, not choosing to take the fight while they are their assassin down. Yeah, I think they, they have to sacrifice it right now. Otherwise, Tassada might go down. There comes the block, but he gets away. I mean, Tassada, of course, with such a nice escape, um, usually he gets away. And they did grab that tribute, so it's one against one now. And uh, Vega is turning back a little bit, but I, I gotta say, I mean, they, they even things out. Um, just one level difference now. Um, and in fact, it's uh, soon gonna be up to 17. And um, Vega's playing this really safe right now. Staying back, they know they can't really jump, in, jump on anything right now. Um, the easy camp is up, but it's just too far out. Yeah, we have pointed this out before. That at the start of the game in the draft phase, we did say that Vega Squadron's comp is much more of a sustain team fight. And we have seen quite a few times Enfacti attempt to use their comp as a first comp to try and take down players like Illidan in the first fight they had in the Vega Squadron's Golem area. However, they couldn't burst him down, and that meant that Illidan was able to pop his first aid, he was able to pop his ultimate, which kept him alive, and then he was able to get his full damage off, while N Faculty had already blown most of theirs. So this is the sustain comp of Vega really showing up in Faculty's first damage comp because it can't break through. Just the oh, tanky and Vega is going for the surprise attack right now. Oh no, they're actually turning around. They thought about going for this, but um, probably knew their timing was up a little bit. Um, and of course, everyone knows the timings here on, on these camps, and the next tribute is up. We're gonna see the next fight here upcoming on the, on the tribute. Anub is already in position. No real clumping yet, so there's not gonna be an engaged all too soon. Uh, but we do have the grenades coming in here on the tribute, so there's gonna be uh, some kind of uh, stop here on the gathering. Yep, there's Odin number one being popped by Slimer. Illidan attempts to go in onto Noah Field, but gets immediately pushed back. Root hits no one, but Bastro actually gets pushed a bit out of position here. There's the and there's the old by Illidan, but he gets gunned down really fast. Amazing shock and awe here by the Sypho, and he gets him, but Arthas goes down, and now it's the two Odins just dishing out so much damage, but they gotta turn around. Illidan falls with him, all the damage potential is gone, and they're gonna focus down the Odin copy here, uh, the Tychus copy that is, and, oh wow, actually a little bit of a target switch here on Slimer, and nice storm to top that off. Can they get him though? I think they can, with a deep yeah, dive by a noob. Solid knockup, overdrive was completely cancelled there, and they do take it. However, while all that was going on, 
Vega were actually able to sneak the tribute, but they're probably going to lose a keep for this. There's 10 seconds left until their first player spawns, which is Arthas and Ufa. But that's not, those will not be enough to take on the full five-man brunt of N Faculty while they try to take down this keep, and they will probably manage it. Yeah, I gotta say that was an amazing fight here by Infaculty. They actually took their time to turn around once the uh, once the second Odin was popped and just let the timer roll down a little bit, a little tiny bit, just to give them the edge uh, in the remainder of the fight. Yeah, right and that now, worked out though, really well. They've decided to go against their pushing, and they're just gonna hang here and attempt to bushwhack like they did at the start of the game. But they're gonna oh, Brightwing gives it away! Straight onto him. The bait is real. <laughs> they take that off us so quickly, and that is going to give Enfac an what? incredibly easy kill. What? What is Abba for doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's got to be a misclick. And it uh, looks like Enfacity will have no problem to grab this uh, second tribute for them. So it's all going to be about the third tribute now. Uh, and that's going to be one of the deciding ways here in this match, because it's 18 against 17 right now. Uh, so really, really um, nice close game. And they could just grab the hard camp. Oh, this is this is really really a ballsy move that Infaculty is going for here. There's an ammo for mine right there as well. They've killed it off, so basically Vega now do know they're there, and they are grouping up, ready for a fight. We will likely see an ultimate evolution soon. It is off cooldown, as is Odin, and actually they're not. The Tigers are completely moving out. Uh, Arthas is alive if they do want to go in, but they need to be so much quicker than they are being. This golem is about to die, and here comes Ufa. Oh, he has to back out and waste his sprint. Oh, they, they might get him. Oh, there comes the storm. Nice storm, and a nice pushback here. Tyrael is still alive, and they're gonna dish it out on Arthas. Arthas is gonna fall. Let's see. Oh, no. Good, good job healing here by Uther. Wow, Arthas just staying alive for so long, but now he goes down, and Slimer there in big trouble. Uh, uh, Tessler are dishing a lot of damage alongside Tychus, and they're just completely ignoring the copy. Now they're going for him. Tessler well, should get away here. He does have the shield, and now there's some vulnerability. Uh, they're fine, and in a, again, another really good fight here by Infaculty. While that all was going on as well, where they were trying to fight Tychus, we also saw Noah feel and the Falstad attempt to fight uh, attempt to fight the Illidan green of the Vega Squadron team. And Illidan was attempting to get the damage done, but Noah Beal was just keeping Falstad alive, and in the end, Illidan just ran out of sustain and did fall as well in the top lane. And yeah, that was a nice little side, side skirmish there. Uh, almost unnoticed, went almost unnoticed there. But uh, good job pulling him out of the fight. And now it's end faculty that's gonna push on some pressure here in the middle lane. And um, I think they're gonna bring this fort to fall. Uh, there's really not that, not yeah, that much that's around it. You can't fight the golem, but that's not your job. He is gonna back up, get into the hole of the storms, and just attempt to help take down the golem. But the golem will now fall. And uh, oh god, follows DC. The maintenance is happening. Oh jeez. Let's hope Don't let it happen. Game too much. They now have a Tassa bot who has immediately been caught out, but is backing up, and Venom goes down at him, and then oh. just focusing Oh, he, he does get away! Nice heal there! Wow! Amazing that it- Oh god, what a stun by Anoop! Getting all three players, and Uther is focused out. Now we still have Green alive, and um, also Arf is still alive. They're doing a good job staying alive here. Abathur really helping out here in that fight. Arf does get away another time. Brightwing falls, and I think that's probably a time they could turn it around, but Tychus falls and Illidan also goes down. Now Arf is the only one left alive here, and he lo he falls in Tacitus Storm, just grilling him alive. I think we should call that the bot bait. DCing oh, yeah. your player to spawn a bot and bait out the energy <laughs> stuns. But By the way, he is reconnected now, so it's I all good. Yeah. He, he reconnected just as that fight started. It was so good. So now, in fact, gonna be moving in, clearing out the waves. They're all a bit too low to think about diving the core. They are waiting for their team to regroup as well. So they're just trying to get a late, some lanes forward, just so they can get a bit of harassment down, maybe pop the shield. We need to be careful because the core does do splash damage. And oh wow, that was a close call. Nice, nice last minute dash here by Zypho. Yeah, yeah he's gonna back out, and they're now gonna head down to their golem. They don't actually have that much health, but it doesn't matter as long as Illidan or Anubrak are the ones tanking. We're gonna see Zypho and Hollow be out just to get some health back, and then they will fly down to join Cripplet when they do engage onto the golem. But it looks like they may get hard camp first. Yeah, they could have gotten the easy camp as well. Uh, they did have that little, little tiny spot of time there uh, to grab that, but going for the hard camp, 
Um, just Tyrio soloing it for now, now Tacito joins in the fray. Uh, Fouls it also, and they're gonna grab the boss afterwards, and they should be fine, because I think Vega is just now realizing, okay, it's probably their time to do the boss now. Yeah, and even if they have realized that it is boss time and Zon, apparently if you deep tunnel, you can dodge the stun, who knew? I was not aware of this. Vega are moving in, but they're gonna have a very tough time fighting Envac when there is a two level disadvantage and there's a golem here, they were not there in time, and Ufa... Ufa completely out of position, but a nice stun there on Brightwing. Oh, he can't really focus him out. Falset with the shock and all, almost getting Arthas, but he gets away for now. Um, nice stun there on Tyrael, he's kept in position, and uh, they will get Slimer. There's there's the Polymorph, and he should go down here any second. Arthas is the first one to fall, though. And Dizzy looks like... He's not gonna take it this time. Yeah, he oh, he's so close, but Zon is there, so he could be caught out by Zon, but where'd he go? Oh, he expired, it was the Abatha. So now they're not even going for the tribute, and faculty just gonna push it all this down. I would like to point out why Ufa did actually just charge in there. He charged in to try and get his Divine Storm off, but he doesn't have Divine Hurricane. He has Resurgence, which is helping in this case, because he's actually helping defend them. Actually, no, he's not, he's hanging in base for no reason. <laughs> but, um, he ran think... in there to try and get the Divine Hurricane, but end faculty split perfectly. So there was no way they were all going to be hit by Divine Hurricane. So they all stayed safe in that fight, won the fight, and now end faculty win the game, move on to the next round. Yeah, really, really an amazing game. Um, well, I gotta give it to Vega though. I mean, they um, they really held their own. Um, they stood their ground for a really long time and uh, put out a good fight, uh, but in the end, uh, and faculty. Just a little bit better uh, in the engagements, always knowing when to pull back. I think we only had one fight that really didn't go the way they planned. Yeah, when they were all the way in Vega's jungle, trying to get a good fight there, and they didn't have their ultimates, and they, sorry, they didn't use their ultimates as efficiently. They weren't able to burst down Illidan like they wanted to, and that is the one fight they lost. But from then on, N Faculty just played superbly well, great positioning, great engagement, and incredible focus, and really good splitting up of Vega, keeping their damage characters separate, keeping Illidan over one side, keeping the two Tigerses over another, and Ufra and Arthas just dropped in between.